Hello, YouTube. So um, recently I did a few video reviews of a bunch of overproof white rums. So I thought it might be fun to do a video a comparative review of some dark rums that uh, are overproof. Um, it's it's a category that ha that's had a bit of a renaissance. And these are the two of the new, new ones to come out. Um, both of these actually have a lot in common, surprisingly, uh, for me. Um, both of these are sort of made by heroes of mine in their own way. And they're both sort of arrive out of adversity in sourcing product. Um, so start with, with this guy. This is the Hamilton uh, 151 Overproof uh, Demerara Rum. Uh, sourced entirely from, from Guyana, 75.5% alcohol, 151 proof. Um, so Ed Hamilton is really kind of the John the Baptist of uh, rum in the United States. Uh, among other things, many other things, um, he is an importer, uh, and he, orig he was the guy who originally brought in the Lemon Heart 151, a bit of a legend, uh, back in the day. Um, um, and then they had uh, a lot of trouble sourcing it, um, so that uh, Ed had to had to go off to basically Guyana uh, and uh, make his own version of a one of a Demerara 151. And that's what this is. Um, in the meantime, uh, Lemon Heart has come back under new owners and a different recipe. Uh, I will not be review reviewing it here. Um, the other one is uh, a bit newer. This is um, Plantations, OFTD, original, uh, old, I'm sorry, old fashioned traditional dark, I don't, whatever that means, um, at 69% alcohol. This is um, a blend from uh, G Jamaica, Gu Guyana, and Barbados. Um, uh, so Plantation, um, well, I, I, so Plantation rums, um, I have kind of shied away from a little bit recently because they tend to be a little bit too sugary. They tend to dose uh, the, uh, their rums a little bit too much for my taste. But the owner um, of Plantation is, is Pierre Ferrand, who's the big sort of independent name in cognac. Um, so and so kind of the my best hope for that region, uh, seeing the light and, you know, um, moving away from the international corporations uh, one of these days. Um, <clears throat> this also arrived from uh, adversity. Um, Plantation had an older old, overproof rum, uh, which was sourced from Trinidad, but Trinidad Tobago rum is kind of a hot mess at the moment. So uh, they had to cut off that product and basically make a new one. So they brought in uh, a kind of think tank of rum nerds to make a, um, an overproof rum for them. Um, and that's what this is. <clears throat> so they're both around the same price. Uh, they're both about 30 bucks. This one is a liter bottle. Uh, this, the Hamilton is a 750, but it's slightly cheaper. So it kind of works out. Um, um, let me think. So both of these uh, do have caramel colorant in them. Uh, and I know that because they tell me on their website, which is nice. It would be nicer if they didn't have it in there. Um, one thing I will say is I don't think there's a lot of caramel colorant in these because um, from the character of them, I think there's a lot of char of, of recharred wood going into this stuff. So a lot of that color is, is actually natural, believe it or not. Um, the other thing is neither of these have, have dosage. Neither of these have sugar added. And I know that because they, t they, they, they tell me. And I would say, uh, particularly for plantation, um, so, I mean, if, if, the, if the Pierre Ferrand guys are listening right now, um, first of all, uh, cask strength cognac, please. I know you can do it because, um, you know, Daniel Boyou do, uh, does it. Um, you, you brought out that chestnut thing a few years ago. That was at a bottled at a higher proof, so I know you can do a cast strength cognac. Put it out, we will buy it. Um, but the second thing I would tell them is, thank you, thank you, thank you for not uh, for not 
dosing this rum. It's a fantastic change, and I hope you apply it more generally. Um, people who sip their rums, like I do, do not want sugar added. And the people, um, the mixologists who you're probably marketing this stuff to, um, like, you know, they want to experiment with their 10 different kinds of simple syrup, and you're taking that fun away from them. Stop it. Stop doing the dosage. Um, anyways, so... Uh, uh, so these are sort of representatives of the, of the new school of high proof uh, dark rums. And so I thought we would try them and compare. So Hamilton first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try these neat to the extent that I can, and then come back to them with a bit of water added. Not too much. I do have to drink this. Um, okay. At full proof, neat. Um, do not shoot this. Um, don't shoot at anything, but especially not over proof rum. Okay. Um, part of the fun of doing reviews like this is you get to name off a whole bunch of you know tasting notes and ex exotic things that you get in your booze. Um, this I get one tasting note, um, and it is. Uh, I'm going to call that hardwood smoked toffee. So if you if you go to the south, um, we kind of like to smoke everything. Uh, we would probably smoke pets and 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 small children if we had the opportunity. Um, and this reminds me of nothing other than someone like taking a big block of toffee and hanging it in a smokehouse for like you know a week. Um, you know, not hickory, no hickory in this. But you're getting you know, oak chips, um, some like maple and, and pecan hardwoods in there. It's it just smells like smoked toffee. It's I mean if I if you really push me I would, you know we could talk about like maybe some Christmas spice in there, maybe some like light molasses. But I mean it's all just a part of that one note. It's it's very very simple um, on the nose. Mm. Oh. Huge, as you'd expect, but still very simple. Um, syrupy, hardwood smoked toffee. <laughs> um, uh, there's uh, maybe a, a hair bit of clove in there, something like that. Um, it's hard to taste because of the alcohol, obviously, but. Yeah, I mean, it's this is this is a very simple rum. Um, it it comes across like you know they, they took um, some you know. So when we're talking about Diamond Distillery in Guyana, most of the attention goes to the uh, the uh, the wooden stills, the uh, the legacy stills from other distilleries. But um, I think most of the rum that comes out of there is actually from. The, uh, the column stills, and it's not sort of bad stuff. Uh, if, if you tried the, the El Dorado 151, the white one, I mean, it's not sipping material, but uh, I mean, it, 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 it strikes me as having a certain decent quality to it. This strikes me as, you know, something that's, um, you know, they, they've taken something that's mostly a, a column distilled rum, and they've just, you know, something very light and passive without a lot of character to itself. And they just shot it up with as much um, oak character as they poss can possibly get by just hammering it with recharred casks. I get the sense that that um, Ed Hamilton, who was coming up with this, you know, really had, knew what he wanted. Um, this is this is a simple blend. Um, could there be uh, some, you know? Versailles or Port Moran in this, I mean, possibly, but I think it's, I think what he was going for was, you know, just, just a little bit of an, of an oak bomb. I could actually see, um, like bourbon drinkers getting into this, um, simple, but <laughs> very lovable. It's like a big, fat, dumb dog. Um, it's, you know, it's not going to win any, any 
contests for tricks, but it's it's just it's just lovely. Okay, on the plantation. Um, mm -hmm. So this is not all go all from Guyana. There is some Jamaica and Barbados in this, um, and it's a lower proof. So let me check check the Hamilton one more time to see if I got the proof right for something. One more skirt. Um, okay, plantation. Well, wood smoke again. Um, that's kind of a running theme with these. Uh, pepper too. Okay, so can we stop for a moment to talk about about this? Because if you if you go on the website. Um, they, they actually give you a lot of information. They tell you, they don't tell you the distilleries they're sourcing it from. They don't give you a lot of information on uh, the, the actual components of this, but they give you hints. Um, and the hints are there to be kind of filled out, out by people on Reddit and the rest of the internet. That's, that's the idea here. So they tell you with the Jamaica portion that it's made in, I think, a, a John Deere steel uh, still, and uh, so pot still. Um, and it's easy to narrow that down to it's, it's Long Pond, um, which is one of the distilleries in Jamaica. Um, with the Guyana uh, component, they explicitly tell you that it's um, from a Port Moron still. And there's only one Port Moron still in the world, and that's one diamond. So that's pretty easy. The Barbados component um, is harder to, harder to track down. They say it's, it's a mix of, of pot still and column still. Um, but that's just kind of the, the Bajan style. Um, so you can kind of do process of elimination. There's four distilleries on Barbados, right? Um, Mount Gay and uh, St. Nicholas are keeping a pretty firm grip on their stock. Um, so that leaves you with, could, could this be Foursquare? I mean, it could be. There's, there's plenty of Foursquare uh, uh, floating around. But I think another um, uh, good candidate and probably the one I would pick would be the West Indies Distillery, um, Black Rock, also uh, also known as Black Rock, um, not only because it actually produces the, the vast majority of Bajan rum, but because uh, these guys, Plantation, actually bought that distillery a couple of months, less than a year, after they started making this uh, this particular product. So that kind of gives it away. Um, okay, the reason I I, I go on a on a tension about that is because those components can get you kind of, um, can get you anticipating a certain character because Long Pond, at least the ones I've had, I mean, Long Pond can make a whole bunch of different recipes, but the Long Ponds I've had and and Port Moran sort of more generally are very heavy, characterful pot still rums. You know, they just pack a huge estuary punch. And if I actually put my nose in this, like I'm not really getting any of that. I, I'm not getting a lot of what I'm what I'm getting is really good Bajan rum. So we're getting yeah, wood smoke, uh, wood spiciness, but also orange. Um, lots of orange, orange pulp, orange zest, all kinds of orange. Um, rust, kind of um, like a, like a like a really dark roast coffee, like a like a um, Italian roast coffee beans, something like that. Um, dried fruit, prunes especially. It really smells like just straight Bajan rum. I'm sure there 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 are um, uh, Jamaican and, and, and Guyanan components in here, but if you told me like this is this was a young cast strength like cockspur or something, I, I would absolutely believe you. Um, the thing is, like I can tell there's there's different kinds of oak in here beyond just the standard sort of American oak. Uh, it's all been toasted uh, and charred like crazy, but like I could swear, maybe it's just the suggestion from the owners, like like it's just psychological suggestions. I can swear I'm getting like like Lamazon oak, in, like French oak in here with that from that kind of pruny, aggressively peppery, smoky note. Um... Christmas spices again, yeah, like clove especially, also cinnamon. 
Mm. Oh. Cough syrup is the first thing I come up with. Like old old Robitussin. Overproof Robitussin. Um, past that, dry, we're, we're heavy on the dried fruit. Um, golden raisins. Uh, prunes. More dark pepper. Tons of, of, of black pepper. Um, like orange, but more dried orange on the palate. Um, dried cranberries. Just lots of dried fruits. Um, wood smoke, wood spice, uh, ash, ashtray stuff. Um, uh, so it initially comes across as more complex than the Hamilton. Um, it's got lots of, lots of different things running around more so I think from the, the different oaks than from like difference in the distillate. I'm, I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure they're not lying about what they're putting in this, but I think this is, uh, my nose is getting heavy on the Bejan rum. Um, and that's fine. Bejan rum is great. Yeah, there's gotta be some French oak in there. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna squirt some water into this and we'll go back to the Hamilton and see how that's uh, got on now that it's at something resembling drinking strength. Close enough. Okay. Um, one second. The Hamilton, when you go back to it, smells kind of the same. I mean, it's it's one note. It's um, but it's a good one. I mean, it's like uh, you know, it's like a terrible punk band. They know one chord, but but wow, is it is it is it is it is it great? Um, syrupy, but but that just that smoked toffee note just dominates in this. Um, but it holds together, is the thing. Um, even reduced to almost half its strength, I think it's probably maybe um, 80 proof, 85, somewhere around there, I've reduced it. Um, it holds together very well. Um, so on the palate, maybe a little more peppery, but otherwise, you know, smoked toffee, that's kind of what you're getting with this rum. And it's lovely. I mean, I said bourbon drinkers um, would get into this possibly. I mean, it's it's not a complex spirit by any means. But, you know, I feel like for, for people who are, who have 30 bucks in their pocket and are looking for a change up from, you know, Stag Jr. or Maker's Mark Cash Strength, um, they should really try to get a hold of this. I think, I think it might surprise them. Um, hmm. this is a rum made to do a particular kind of job. Um, it's not fussy about it. Um, I imagine the recipe here was really simple. Um, um, but it works. Um, I'm going to give this sort of 82 plus uh, out of 100, which is not sort of a, a, a terrific high fly and score, um, but it's a, it's a simple pleasure. This is kind of, you know, in single malt terms, this is like, you know, Balvenie double wood or something. It's not going to, you know, challenge your brain too much, but it's, it's just lovely. Um, by contrast, uh, let's go to the, the plantation. Okay, um, so there's some issues with this when you, I find that if you want to set this neat, you should really, uh, like, keep it a little bit too hot for your comfort zone, if I can put it that way, because I found with experimentation, when you add a lot of water to this, even just to get it down to 80, 85%, 
80, 85 proof, it tends to sort of just um, uh, fall apart really easily. Um, it's better to keep it maybe around, you know, 90 proof or, or above somewhere, you know, where it feels a little bit too hot. There's, there's a lot of um, bourbons like that. Like I'm talking a lot about bourbons in this review and there's probably a reason for that. Um, for some reason, the, the beam range, a lot of the time has this characteristic where, where if you sort of get them down to prop to sort of comfortable drinking strength, strength, they could just disintegrate on you a little bit. Um, but what's happening is all those nice flavors are still there, but they've just kind of, um, you know, broken away and flattened out and kind of been submerged in a big old wall of smoke. Um, yeah, smoke and pepper really kind of taking over. There's the orange notes are still there. The sort of, um, dried fruit notes are still there, but it's, it's, it, they've just been flattened down to a pancake somehow by taking it down. Um, on the taste. Yeah. The ash has just kind of taken over. Um, kind of the same at, as it was at strength, but you know the things that you you thought were were there and substantive have kind of fallen apart a little bit. Um, so uh, um, I would give this as a grade like an eighty-two minus. It's in many ways more complex than the Hamilton, but it's, um, this has one note, but it has depth. This has lots of little things going on, but the moment you kind of try, kind of try to chase them down, they fall apart on you. Um, I feel a little bit like they, they might've tried to be, um, they might have overthought this a little bit. Like, I, I love the story about how they got a bunch of nerds together to, to come up with a recipe for this thing. But it might be, uh, in a way, too picky. I, I wonder if um, they might have had more success, you know, picking a simpler recipe, maybe dropping um, um, the, the sort of more famous, sort of nerdy, attractive components and just focusing on, on simpler stuff. So one thing I thought I had um, trying this and I'll have this as a, as a coda for this review, was, um, I mean, I think you could do, uh, you could kind of take the idea that they had here and run with it. So the thought was, okay, um, we can't get Trinidad rum anymore, but let's, so let's go to the other, um, sort of the other big Navy rum countries um, to, you know, get, get our rum um, and make it that way. Well, why couldn't we do the same thing? I mean, why couldn't, you know, any um, producer of, of repute with some resources do the same thing? I mean, this the materials uh, at, at issue here aren't that expensive, right? So why don't we just say, okay, we're going to stick mostly to um, uh, you know, column still distilled rums, but we're going to get, you know, components from Barbados, Jamaica, and Guyana, and kind of mix them together. That sounds like a good combination. Um, <clears throat> how'd you do that? Well, uh, I'm, I'm just to, you know, show off, just to make a point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to combine those three components, Guyana, Barbados, because it's mostly Barbados, and uh, I'm some Jamaica. Uh, so this Hamilton will represent our Guyana component. I'm going to, and I'm going to add half an ounce to my fresh glass here, right? And this plantation with uh, the mass of, I'm guessing black rock uh, rum will represent the Bajan component. Okay, in we go in the glass. And what I've got sitting over here on the side is Rum Bar, uh, Worthy Park, which I just reviewed um, a week or so ago. 
and I'm going to add half an ounce of this. Now, if you're getting all upset because I'm adding a white rum to some dark rums, I mean, most dark rum is just food coloring anyways. So, I mean, you could throw this in an oak barrel for a week if, it, if you really want to. Um, um, but, okay, that's the idea. Add some, throw some Jamaican rum in. This, none of these are expensive. And just for fun, I have, I have my hand in, my rum fire. I'm going to add half a cap full, uh, just to give it a little bit of extra Jamaican goodness. Half a cap full of Hamden. All right, let me sit, let this sit for a minute. So like I said, um, the reason I'm doing this is to kind of make a point. None of these are expensive. Um, I think all these bottles are available for around 30 bucks or so. So uh, the, the, the important components of these can be had pretty cheap um, if a producer is willing to look around. Um, and the result is Okay, this hasn't even fully integrated yet, but I, as a sipping room, I already actually like this more than um, the Plantation and the Hamilton on their own. What I'm kind of getting is, um, so, yeah, so the, um, the Worthy Park and the sort of smoke toffee thing in the Hamilton are kind of fighting it out over the top note, up, over the top note. Um, kind of have these oaky notes and this funky fruity thing um, going at it a little bit. And it's lovely actually. Um, if I give this a few hours, I have, I've experimented with this before. If I give this a few hours, they will sort of integrate a little bit more and um, the oakiness will, will assert itself a little bit more. But right now the, the, the Worthy Park is winning this. God, this actually smells better than I remember it. Um, okay, I'm gonna give it a sip. Mm. Oh, that's really good, actually. Um, I'm not going to bother with a dropper. I'm just going to pour in water willy-nilly. Um, yeah, the oak is coming out more now. Um, the plantation is a little bit lost in this, but it, I also feel like it's providing, you know, it, it's kind of marrying the other two a little bit. Um, by the way, <clears throat> let me move this so you can see the act, the things I'm actually supposed to re be reviewing. Um, as a, uh, so as I've said before, I don't know that much about cocktails. Um, so I can't really tell you which one of these is better in a particular cocktail. Um, I do like this better for sipping. Um, although they're, I think they're both worthwhile. I think they're sort of good for the price. Um, it, it did occur to me that if I were making a punch or something, you know, something where I, and I needed something to kind of hold up over the weight of, um, you know, a lot of fruit juice, I would probably go with the Hamilton. It's, it's just, it's just bigger and simpler. But if I needed something that, that kind of needed to, um, to fit in better with other alcohols, like a white rum or, you know, something, maybe a gin or something, I would probably go with this. This seems more willing to give way um, to other stuff. Let me set a second. Yeah, the, the Jamaica's firmly in control. Um, but yeah, this is this is nice actually. <laughs> um, hmm. That's good. Um, and someone can make this, right? This is not expensive. This, this stuff in here is not expensive. This is young rum that is readily available. So if you're a producer, you can make this tomorrow if you want. Um, uh, 110 points for my, uh, um, <laughs> my own dark rum blend. Um, 84, uh, 82 plus. 82 minus, um, and the Worthy Park is amazing. Um, and I'll leave you with that thought. Um, I would love it if someone brings this out. Plantation, if you're listening, Hamilton. Uh, um, Ed, it, 
I've heard something about like a New York blend or something, which is kind of like this, but I haven't actually been able to find it in the Chicago market. So, you know, maybe send it over if you get a moment. Um, and that's about all I have to say. Uh, uh, um, drink responsibly. Do not shoot any of these, and including this one. And um, thank you very much for watching.